you know, I, my, my question is, 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 is pretty easy, I guess. And I had to follow it up with, um, uh, with maybe some follow-up questions, but uh, many people, you know, in, in this committee would like to see all the, you know, all the fossil fuels done away with as of yesterday, but can someone help explain how natural gas is, is a necessity or is necessary as a bridge fuel for the transition? And I'll kind of leave that open for, for whoever wants to grab that question. I'll, I'll jump in first and just note that this great decarbonization we've seen of the power sector has been driven by two factors, which is renewables and by cheap natural gas. And then the fracking revolution or whatever you want to call it, the technological advances there have contributed enormously to moving us away from coal. We were 40% of our power generation from coal just 10 years ago, and now we're down to about 20%, and gas has played an enormous role uh, in, de in decarbonizing the power sector. That's where we are today. The question is, where do we go in the future? And whether or not you can continue to have that much gas on the system and try and get to some kind of decarbonization goal where you actually address the climate crisis. You know, what, it was 10 years ago where we were seeing um, uh, natural gas as the clean energy. And when you start seeing what's happening in Germany and as they're transitioning uh, you, you know, to to re, uh, renewables, you're seeing they also have an increase on their dependency on natural gas to offset it. Because the last time that I checked, we were really having a hard time figuring out how to store um, re, uh, renewables and be able to meet high pitched de demands when we are uh, facing peak hours. For instance, in California, the reason why they have rolling blackouts is during peak hours. Um, you see that sometimes solar comes offline, uh, especially in the valley. Solar will come offline around seven, eight o'clock in the summer when it's still 116 degrees and people are at home. And there's no way to meet that demand if you don't have on the demand energy, for instance, natural gas or nuclear. So my question goes back, how do we make that transition without natural gas or nuclear still being part of the portfolio? So maybe I could address this. Uh, you know, when you, you look at California, the so-called duck curve, we do not have anything else. You, when we use these intermittent fuel sources or these intermittent technologies, when we, when the sun goes down, and, can, and sometimes it's combined not just with losing the sun but the wind, you need dense, massive power to bring up the power system as the, as as we get into nighttime, and there is no alternative other than natural gas or some other alternative um, fossil fuel. And until we have right. at scale these alternatives, this is what we're going to have to do. Okay, I want to jump in because I also feel like there's been a kind of repeated mischaracterization of what's gone on in Germany. Um, the reality of in, in Germany is that they uh, they very quickly decided to close all their nuclear power plants, and that is what has created, in my view, the biggest squeeze on the market there and the greater reliance on natural gas and the higher power prices. It has certainly been they've pushed for renewables for years, but a well, in sir, my view inconsil pretty sir, ill conceived idea here. about nuclear and is sir, really what triggered the problems. Time there. Here, when you start looking at what's happening, we're wanting to do away with nuclear too. So if we're going to if we're trying to end nuclear, then you're going to have to have natural gas to fill that gap. I, and so we're running down the exact same path that 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 Germany has, and we're running down it thinking that we're going to have a different result. And I don't see that happening. I see this being the definition of insanity, sir. With respect, um, I I agree with you that uh, with 20 percent of our power is from nuclear energy. Uh, and that's zero carbon. And shutting that down would be madness if you want to address climate change. Um, but if you look so at the infrastructure, could, could I just let me finish, please? Yeah, the infrastructure let me, let me, bill includes six billion should, dollars to keep those nuclear reactors open. Sir, hold on a second. Reclaiming my time here. I just want to get back to you. So, and we're so let's let's find some common ground here. You, you agree with me on nuclear? So, do you think we should increase our our, um, decrease our, our nuclear facilities in rather than shutting them down like like um, uh, a lot of people on this committee is wanting to do? 
I, I, I think, like I said a moment ago, closing the existing nuclear reactors in the United States, if you want to achieve decarbonization, does not make any sense. Do you think we should open more? I think it's a technology that should be invested in. And again, if you look at the infrastructure bill, right. there are billions of dollars to support advanced nuclear reactors. I appreciate it. I yield back my time. Thank you.